Hey, it's Lance 20 Side at Night. Today we're going over the Dorgar and Starfinder. They are a... There are two things. They're one, a reskin of the Legacy of Race the Dwarves, and they're also a an old NPC or villainous uh, monster, if you would call them. Yeah, they're kind of monsters. Yeah, they're not cool guys. Yeah, that that we, that wasn't in the Alien Archive 2 or 1, so we decided to put them in here. Or the Starfinder Core rulebook. Yeah. I mean, there's only goblins in there, but... Anyway, um, to start off, the racial traits that we gave them was an ability adjustments of plus two con, plus two intelligence, and minus two charisma. We gave them intelligence instead of wisdom because this points more to them being scientists and technomancers over the dwarfs want to be mystics. The dwarfs cast their class are typically mystics, and this showcases how the Duragar are even mechanically the antithesis of the du of the dwarves. Um, do you want to talk about their size and type? Yeah, so their size, you know, they're they're still medium-sized creatures. Technically, you know, even though they are the smallest medium creature, they're still medium. Um, they they still also get six hit points when they you know when they start out, and they also get dark vision. It's upgraded from the door of sixty feet to one hundred and twenty feet because, like in D and D and Pathfinder, their dark vision has always been better since they you know they live in the underdark where doors you know it's it's still kind of dark in there if you don't have torture something but they, they live in the underdark like it's it's in the name underdark like they're, they're living in rock bottom yeah it's like the difference between living in phoenix arizona and then you know kind of living in hades how to put it on your sheet the Jurgar, they're medium humanoids with the dwarf subtype uh therefore that uh we gave them Jurgar magic as a standard action you can cast invisibility starting at third level i know it seems kind of missing that they don't have the enlarge spell but they just don't have it in starfinder i wish they did it would make things easier but it seems like an easier sell to bring a homebrew-esque race as a player race uh to your dm and say hey i really want to be this then uh then it would be you know offering up a homebrew race and then also a homebrew spell yeah it just sounds like a lot to, it just sounds like a lot to pitch you know i did give them invisibility at will because it always has been an at-will spell for them. And it seems kind of strong, but also kind of not, because there are a lot of things that can circumvent this. And when considering either if it's gonna be cool for the player and for the game, or mechanically even, within reason, I like to lean more towards what's cooler and more fun mm -hmm. than you know exactly even, because it is more how you play the character. You know, it's a role-playing game, not a role-playing game. Yeah, and you know, there's like you were saying, there's lots of things to counteract that. So if you do have a Dorgar player who's who's abusing the invisibility, just remember, you know, if they do any sort of actions while invisible, um, or you know, most you know, if they attack or in, most actions will get rid of the invisibility. They'll they'll decloak. Um, but also, it's the future, so there's lots of things. So there's there's infrared cameras. Uh, you get like I don't know, like a heartbeat sensor on your gun or something, or really sensitive. Um, microphones that'll pick up sound or something like that because even though you're invisible you still make noises so if you do have a player who is abusing that just remember it's the future you can throw that in yeah definitely what to say if one of your players is very infamous or famous being a Drugar or being any race uh, you know why wouldn't say your next quest or be you know why wouldn't the next people see your group coming and sort of really try to figure out what the strengths and weaknesses of the people they're going to potentially be facing are and try to augment themselves uh even within reason to uh, to deal with that threat yeah or if there's a like a lot of, uh, on the news it's like yeah in the, in the sector there's a lot of uh, break-ins where you know things are getting picked up by something invisible you know a lot of stores they're gonna maybe upgrade to thermal sensors now or something or yeah or absalom security might and uh, so another thing that we gave them, I like to see, is when creating a Dwargar, you may choose uh, computers, engineering, mysticism, or physical science. And you add, a, if you add a skill rank into one of these, you can then add half your character level rounded down into, you know, skill checks uh, related to that skill. This can be sort of role-played as it is one thing, it's not the entire list. It's this, so this can be seen as the Jurgar, they really do strive toward perfection in all the thing, you know, in, in their craft, and this sort of plays into that a bit. Whether they're going to be, you know, diplomats or bounty hunters or slavers or, or slavers or crafters, yes, they want to make sure if they're going to be making a chair, it's the best gosh darn chair that they can make. Yeah, if they're gonna, they're gonna be a slaver. By gosh golly, they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna be the best slavery man ever. Oh Lord. <laughs> 
<laughs> we also gave them light sensitivity to sort of offset all the good to offset all the good that they have. Uh, so light sen so light sensitivity. The Duragar are dazzled as long as they remain in an area of bright light. Or whatever they're focusing on, you know, if they're attacking something or doing something, it, if it is bright or you know, regular light or sunlight, it is gonna, yeah. you know, gonna give them that dazzle condition. So you could even do something where let them wear like really thick sunglasses or something like that, just so it blocks out what's visually daz dazzling them. Yes, yeah, so when a Duragar is either born as a baby or pulled out of a molten cyst in the ground, it's given a special pair of blue block of sunglasses or a welding mask, and this could be seen as. Even though it is the mega future, you know, thousands of years, you know, ahead of uh, advanced the time of uh, Pathfinder, it's still certain things do still stay, and so they're not blinded by the light, but they are, uh, you know, they're 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 taken back by it. They are still, so I would still definitely see them as either subterranean dwellers, mm -hmm. uh, or you know, they they do really like to stay in either the lowest levels of Absalom Station or they do stick around their dimly lit spacecraft because light is a luxury, and yeah. why have it when you can get around just fine without such comforts? Yeah, or maybe there's like planets where they don't rotate very fast, so they just live on the night side of the planet. Yeah, or well, one thing that I thought was uh, that an idea that I thought that you actually brought that was kind of cool about this, where they are still subterranean dwellers since the dwarves do live centuries longer than some races, like say the Shireen or the humans would. They go to a planet, they dig underneath there, like under, under the bottom, they mine all the resources, and then one thing they do, because it is a few generations uh, that pass by for a human, where it's just in a lifetime for a dwarf, once a few generations pass and they have started to make settlements and whatnot, the Duragar spring up like the locusts do, drag them underground, make them slaves, and yeah, sell them off. Yeah, destroy all the buildings, harvest all the materials, and then, yeah, wait a few decades, and then someone's like, oh, this looks like a nice spot to put down roots. That could definitely be why one, like a planet that has a lot of a good you know, mining potential or you know, life potential, doesn't really seem to have any civilizations, only old ruins. Duragar did it. Yeah. A little bit of flavor text with them. A Duragar's obsession with perfection reaches both to magic and technology, and although they tend to find themselves more in the roles of mechanics, soldiers, and technomancers, uh, Duragar who stray away, they're not considered outcasts. Instead, Duragar breaking from these roles, they look to perfect the other crafts, uh, are seen as broadening the influence of their dark god. Duragar can be found in many roles, however, traditionally, uh, Duragar Solarians, they almost always favor the Graviton mode since, yeah. you know, it's, it's yeah. dark. Yeah, like, you need two or else you need, you know, both of those Graviton and Radiant abilities, but if you, because if you have more than one, you're going to mess up, so they probably have, like, you, there's that wiggle room, like, one or two abilities, it's like, oh, I'm going to take a little more Graviton ability, because Dash Lords. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're Underdark, not Shadowfell, mm -hmm. but also... If a Duragar really wants to be extreme, like a Duragar, you know, hardcore traditionalist, I would see them taking the hit. Yeah, or, you know, this is one thing's really different, but, you know, maybe they're, you know, it's like, ooh, I'm still gonna do it because I gotta be the best Solarian ever, even if I have to learn stupid Radiant abilities. And if they are gonna be mystics, I would see them definitely being, you know, more overlords mm -hmm. or mind breakers. Yeah. You know, things like that. Uh, Duragar, they are, they are most at home underground or in similarly enclosed environments such as mining asteroids or in the confines of uh, spaceships. This extends to the aesthetic of their ships, where the typical sleek steel plating or you know, very you know, cushiony seats that take up the entire room, those are dashed away and uh, where form gives way to function. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with the Duergar, you know, and Pathfinder and D&D &D and other stuff like that, they, they are a lot more Spartan. So on a Duergar ship, it would be you know, there wouldn't be a lot of creature comforts that, you know, things would be kind of like a like a weird Ikea where everything is very, you know, very sleek and cool, but not of a lot of it's very comfortable. It's just like a chair with four pieces of metal, a place to put your butt and a backrest so you don't get bad posture. But unlike Ikea chairs, they would not break when you sit down on them, not even if you're a great big fat guy like me. Mm -hmm. They're very well made. They're the perfect example of a chair, mm -hmm. which you would think of when you think of, you know, a really good chair. It just doesn't have any it's just not extra comfortable. cushiony or anything like, like that. Like, you, you can sit in it, but... But it's gonna be sturdy, it's gonna be economical. Yeah, it's gonna be made really well. Uh, Kind of like the dwarves, how they, you know, with their striving stri stri to perfection, the, you know, they might put a little bit of the old razzle dazzle on it, but you, they're really are utilitarian. 
Um, so there wouldn't be a lot of things like, you know, big grand viewports or um, like every bad guy race that ever goes on the Enterprise, they're like, oh, it's too comfortable here. They're, they're, you know, the floors wouldn't be carpeted. There are probably a lot of uh, smoke and red lights for some reason. It, well, I can imagine there being a lot of like... Uh, like a Klingon I, ship. I can imagine it, things being very dimly lit because they do shy away from sunlight yeah. when they can avoid it. And they are they don't really care about comfort of things. So I imagine like really tightly packed quarters uh, with only the bare necessities on them. Uh, there's not a lot of light there uh, because they can see in darkness. And so the outsides of ship uh, potentially being you know have being very craggy and uh, almost asteroid like because mm -hmm. they are cave dwellers. They are typically found in Dysporia when they are sort of, you know, when they would be seen. I would see these seldom lit ships. They would at times be an unsuspecting, you know, bane or terror to different travelers of space where they model their ships to look like, you know, the craggy facade of asteroids and whatnot. And then when a ship is when like a merchant vessel or even like in you know, a racer is speeding across space alone, they go in for it for an ambush attack you know maybe three or four little space hunks are flying off to uh, capture a small racer or a freighter shipping off goods they, they, they steal the goods they enslave the other racer or just eat them used to say yeah yeah and then uh rinse rinse wa rinse and repeat yeah or you know they don't do that they could just do something where they're very just utilitarian ships so nothing too fancy like dwarven architecture where they're like "Ooh, we're gonna make it look super cool because we gotta live here it's like no listen we just we, we don't care what it looks like that's a race to resources yeah it's like well we're gonna spend all that money on on paint listen we're, we're just gonna beat people up it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah ain't none of this matters uh some adventures durgar i would definitely see them as taking their ancient rejection of the quest for sky as a way of life whether it be dashing the dreams of a dwarf or just making yeah. sure that certain uh, races cannot, like certain races can't leave the planet. Like maybe they spring up uh, once the civilization has decided, okay, it's time to start connecting to the outside uh, galaxy again. Mm -hmm. Then they spin, then they you know spring up, they ambush them, and they drive them down beneath. That's probably their civilization cap. Yeah. Or they go to. Um you know, races that are just about to, you know, find out drift technology or basically anything to like get off their moon, but, you know, so something close to where in our Starfinder gameplay video, you know, planet money, um, you know, maybe they would go there and they would, you know, kidnap a bunch of scientists or, you know, just shoot them a lot real bad and say, yeah, listen, we're going to, you know, keep making babies and every once in a while we'll, we'll just take a lot of you and we won't kill all of you or something like that. Yeah, maybe if you want to check out Planet Money, it's somewhere here. I would put a Dwargar NPC in the roles of, I don't know, uh, arms dealers for sure, mm -hmm. uh, even shady ones, uh, artisans, uh, maybe more in the way of making a really a really sturdy table and not like a really nice looking table. You know yeah, I mean? like... Like, a, like a, they make arms and armor, mm -hmm. but not, you know, luxury items. Yeah, like the, they'd have like their you know, their sort of cultural style, but they wouldn't put a lot of detail and filigree. It's like, listen, this is the best table you're gonna get for the best price and with as little resources we put in, it, this table is gonna last you. It doesn't look nice, but. But it's by no means shoddy work. Yeah. Well, I would see them at, for sure as black market traders and even slavers, either in the lowest levels of Absalom Station, in the Dysporia, or on that one robot planet. I think it's Acton. Yeah. But that's the rest planet, please. Be nice to me in the comments down below, or don't. I'm kind of a fat piece of garbage. Uh, so, how would you introduce a Duragar, either player or NPC, into your game? Um, so, as an NPC, I would put them in as, like you're saying, like a like a black market uh, guy, and like an like an arms dealer. So, not just like, ooh, I'm gonna you know sell you this gun, but so like if you, if you read the armory book, there's certain things. So, if like guns made by Abadar Corp, they do have targeting systems on there where if if you're if you're gonna shoot someone who is of who's wearing like a law enforcement uniform um or if they are you know like a, like they register as a juvenile for that race it won't the bullet won't go out but you know maybe they're the ones who you take it to them like they'll you know they'll jailbreak it for you like oh yes i'll update this so you can shoot all the babies and cops <laughs> yeah there's a thousand credits and you can go hog wild yeah or something where there's a gun that's like really powerful but they're saying no for you know, pe people don't need you know a 200 you know round ar-15 they'll be like ooh, 200 why cripple yourself i'll sell you a 400 <laughs> round 
You know, you, you need that for for protecting yourself against, I don't know, a burglar. <laughs> you need 400 yeah. rounds. Or something where they're going to be very saccharine and sweet. They're not going to be like like the, the stereotypical evil trader where they'll be like, no, no, listen. Like, they'll, they'll care about you. They'll talk to you about stuff. And then eventually, down the line... They'll, they'll trick you into being in their debt, so you have to go do evil jobs for them. Like, maybe they'll trick you into, I don't know, doing something where you're it's like, oh, I'm delivering medicines to, 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 to the poor or something. And then, and then once you're on the way back from, you know, delivering the medicine to the, to the poor people, you hear on the news, oh, a bunch of poor people died from poison medicine. And then he, he calls you back and says, hey, so listen, all that medicine, that was, uh, that was you guys, that was on purpose, and I've got you know all this proof that'll get you in jail for forever and you'll be you know super wanted throughout the system. So do do these jobs that you that I wanted you to do, but you shied away from because they were bad, and uh, if you don't do it, I'll tell the cops on you. Or even if you, do, like, even if you don't accept that initial quest from a Duragar, say the dwarf is really pensive about you know taking care of them any further, things like that, one thing that you could do is say the dwarf is fine with you buying a weapon, from the Duragar, but the the Duragar keeps a manifest of all their sales. So if you do buy a gun that say can kill a baby or some sort of other illegal weapon or things like or you know powerful suit of armor that you isn't wouldn't quite be able, legal. Yeah, isn't legal. Uh, then they would cut, you would you know get a call from them. Oh, two things. One, uh, I put a tracker on you. Know, well, one, I've saved the manifest of the um, of, of that legal weapon or that legal suit of armor that you guys have. Don't don't worry about telling uh, you know security or the cops about this because I will definitely let them know that it'll sold to you. Sure, I'll go down, but so will you. You can get out of this only if you deliver this medicine for me. And then it just gets worse and worse from there. Mm -hmm. You know, where the group has to find a way to get out of the clutches of this Durogar. Uh, that's one way I'll put them in there. Another way I'll put them in there is say a lot of people don't know about the Durogar since they are an ancient evil mm -hmm. and that could have potentially been tamped down where they mainly, they possibly relegated themselves to the shadows, sort of like how Sith did after they lost their home, uh, after they lost their temple world of Korriban, they uh, sort of relegated themselves to the shadows, where now they're going out and selling the name of dwarves. Like, there's a cult of, I don't know, uh, Salarian uh, Duragar, uh, who tend more to the Graviton mode of things. Yeah. And they're going out and they're committing evils and atrocities so that Duragar, and you know, really going under the guise of these dwarves. And now these, this dwarven enclave does have to figure out, you know, what's going on, how can we clear our name, or even if it's a dwarven family line, you know, that's one reason why a dwarf may have gone out to adventure, because they're trying to clear the family name after learning, oh, great grandpa Kershmitten, he didn't go out and, you know, kill all those babies, it was the Duragar, but I have to figure out a way to, uh, to, cl to clear their name, yeah. it was, you know, centuries ago, and people got short attention spans. Uh, yeah, because like on Star Wars in 30 years, they forgot that wizards used to be a thing. Yeah, it's, listen, it helped, it helped me to not, not right now, kids. Also, I don't believe my dad existed because that was over 30 years ago, too, and he's dead. One thing I do is, as a Duergar player, there's there's a couple of ways I would play it. I would play it as either just, like, you're, like when you go into playing it, you know you're going you're playing the bad character. You're going to be the, the villain, the bad guy. Which every group might need. Yeah, or if you're going to play a good doer guard because i know there's a whole thing like 10 years ago where everyone who played a drow was oh, well, you know was, was he he left drow side because he yeah, he didn't want to yeah because he didn't want to be evil he just wants to be good but drow side doer guard side will <sighs> let him do that but i got these two scimitars and i can track people yeah, and i there. and i've got a, a space panther who put a fishbowl over their head no i mean i'd play it more like as a, if i was gonna play a good sorry, a good Jurgar, I'd play it more like a Ferengi kind of a deal where, you know, they're, you know, he just decided not to be such a, just a crappy person. Like he's not going out of his way to be evil like a Jurgar is. Like he's not going to be a slaver, but he's, you know, still going to be evil. Like, uh, you know, if he's a mercenary. He's going to make like a mercenary contract. And it, you know when he does steal from them, it's like, but you you can't steal from me. That's not what a mercenary. That's not a security guard. So well, actually, if you read this contract we signed, it says I get to steal anything if not nailed down. And <laughs> and your and your ship was not nailed down. <laughs> you did not nail it to the ground or something where it's like you sold me you know some shoddy goods. Like yeah, but you're the idiot who paid for it. It's like yeah, but all set or like or all sales are final. Something yeah. like that. 
I that's definitely one way to go. Another uh, one way that I would go since Durgar they are very direct and curt. If you do have that player that's constantly just they want to make friends with every NPC and squirrel they walk by, and they're being super flowery and like, oh, but we need to stop here. A Durgar is going to be very direct, like. No, that's stupid. It doesn't help us at all. We need to go here, and we need to kill this person, and then we need to go collect from this one here. Uh, you know, they would really be great for the DM, I want to say, to keep the grain, to keep the game on track. So you're not, I don't know, spending two whole gameplay sessions on a bus, or going to two different restaurants in two whole gameplay sessions. Or they would be great. Sessions. They would be fantastic to keep way to keep a group on track is i want to say one positive thing about a a Durgar, somebody who's very objectively minded um is there anything else about Durgar that you want to talk about um no that about does it for Durgar. again i know we've been getting some feedback on reddit about what we should should be doing for this kind of thing but please play test this tell us how this is going any tweaks you're doing we'd be grateful for that you know we're still getting yeah, definitely. We're still, we're still trying this out. This is our first uh, home-brewed race that I hope you guys give it a try. Yeah. It's our first amazing race. Thanks for watching 20 Side of Night. Like, share, and subscribe uh, just for your chance to be entered in our, our monthly giveaways. Again, November is an Alien Archive 2. And bye for now.